Hey guys, so I want to talk today about how to do well in your classes, like what techniques and things can you do um, that will help you get an A in your class. So these are things that I've learned over time um, and I find them extremely helpful, so I'm going to share them with you. All right, so first thing I would say, as Peter Drucker says, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he wrote this book, and the main point of the book is time management. It's like one of the best-selling books in the world, and Harvard makes you read it if you go to Harvard Business School. And the, the biggest point of it is time management is super important. So that is like my number one tip. So if I have an exam, I'll usually start studying like two weeks before. That's when I'll start making like my study guide or do like note cards so you're not stressing because let's be real, if you give yourself two, three days before the exam, something comes up, something happens, you don't feel good or you just realize there's way more information than you thought there was gonna be, there's no way you're gonna be able to retain everything that the teacher wants you to know. So I usually say start studying two weeks before. Um, secondly is I have this super cute planner and I keep everything in my planner. I don't know how people function without planners. I really don't. Like I was looking at the syllabus for the class that I'm taking over the summer and I'm just like, I wouldn't even remember that anything was due ever. There's so many different things due, different days, lab reports, online assignments, this, that. Like I don't know how people do it. So this planner is super cute, and I know that people are obsessed with planners, and some people pay like $60 for planners, and like I understand because they're really cute and amazing, but this one was only $9 at Michael's, and look, it has like cute little parts like where it has quotes, and I love it. I think it is amazing, and it has like these cute little plastic things. It's awesome, so, and just be happy. So this is what mine looks like. Um, kind of good page. All right, so here's one. So like the blue is like places I need to be. So this is like lab at this time. This is my job. Um, these are purples, the homework assignments that are due. And um, the red is exams. So that's how I kind of keep organized. And I like to flip to like the week ahead so I can kind of, um, you know, prepare. And then sometimes like I'll write in things like write out exam three, um, study guide questions, like the two weeks before exam three is due. Um, so yeah, um, so this super important to be organized. Um, then the other thing is, so I think it really depends on the class. Obviously, um, the teacher should let you know the information that you need to know and the best way to study. So I'm not going to say you should 100% read the book. You should do this, you should do that. Things that you should do. You should 100% do the homework and make sure that you understand all the concepts that the teacher is going over in class and all of the things that they tell you that you need to know. And if you don't know them, then that's when you should go to the textbook. Unless you're in a class that is based solely around the textbook where the teacher is like, you need to read these chapters, then I would say you don't have to necessarily read the textbook. Like a lot of teachers um, base it off their slides and they do a good job summing up the chapters in their slides. So I would just make sure that you understand the information and then if you don't, refer back to the textbook. So my, for example, my anatomy and physiology class, we have um, it's hybrid so part of it's online and then the lecture and the exams are in class and um, like homework every week is the homework assignment is a hundred questions and each question sometimes has five questions so like it will be like label all these parts of the eye you know what I'm saying so I mean you're talking probably anywhere from like two around 200 questions then we have a learn smart which is another 75 questions and a learn smart is every time you get a question wrong it goes to the end so you have to like re-get it until you get them all right so I mean at the end of doing a chapter I didn't necessarily read the chapters um, because in my program it's like if you're asked a question you don't know what it is you can click like refer to the book and it will pull up the book on the computer for you so it was pretty much like flipping back and forth between homework questions and the book and that really covered everything and I felt like at the end of the chapters I really did understand the information it was a really good software um, and I encourage other people to take that class if they can um, but anyways so it just depends on the class and the teacher should be very straightforward about what she expects you to know so 
Um, another thing is if you're in science class, you're going to have lab practicals where you see things in lab and then you try to like draw them out on paper, sort of kind of what they look like, and then you have to go home and you have to memorize it and then you have to come in and say like what this is. So for example, I don't have all of my practical stuff because I threw away a bunch of stuff, but um, this is like when we were going through slides of different tissues and muscles and things like that. So what I did is I went online because my drawings in class, like they don't look like this. They look like squiggles. I'm not going to be able to tell the difference. So I printed out all the different slides. I said what they were, the different parts of the slides. Like some of these have like four or five things on the back that I need to know. Just everything that you can know to retain the information is what's important. I have like, when we were doing the bones, I printed out some handouts online. And none of these were part of my class. These are things that I said to myself, what is the best way for me to retain the information? So, um, so yeah, just like coloring, the more you see it, the better you're going to do. So, um, and then, so for example, um, sorry, I literally have so much stuff that I'm trying out. Then my other class, Human Growth and Development, hers is based mostly on the slides. So what I would do is I would go through and I would rewrite all the slides, this probably wasn't that necessary, but I really found it helpful before the exam to use these as like study guides versus flipping through 20 pages of six slides per page. It was much easier to just look at this and be like, okay, um, this, do I understand it? Yes or no? What is it if I don't? Um, so that's that. Really, it's finding your technique. It's finding what works for you to understand the information the best. So. That's going to take us into my next thing and probably most important. So there are different types of learners. Um, there are visual learners that do better like looking and like watching, you know, um, things like maybe slides or um, something like that. Then there are auditory learners who do better when someone's explaining it to them or talking about it. Then there are like hands-on learners that need to almost get up and give a presentation to understand it. They have to talk, they have to move, they have to explain it. Um, and then there are people who are a combination of all of this. I missed one. Oh, and writers, people who like do better when they write something out. Um, so you just, and there's lots of quizzes. You can go online and see like what type of learner you are. So I think the biggest thing is to find what type of learning you are and work with that. So for me, I found out that I am a learner that does better with everything. I'm like equal parts of each one. So what I do is I do the thing like how I write out um, all the information. So that's writing or like when my teacher gives us a practice test, I'll write out all the questions, all the answers, what the definitions to all the answers are so that I understand everything that's on the sheet of paper um, that's given to me. Then what I'll do is anything that I don't understand, I'll watch like a YouTube video. That helps me a lot to have somebody explain it to me. And then once everything's said and done, I will get up on my whiteboard, which is over there. It's got some writing on it. And I will draw out things. I'll talk about it. I'll really make sure that I understand all the important concepts. Um, so, so yeah, that is pretty much what works for me. I think the biggest thing is trial and error. Ever figure out what works for you. Definitely go see the teacher and understand like what information is important for you to retain. Also, I will say a trick that I learned is to also check rate my professor. Very important. So if you have, so here's a little, a little story, story time. So um, when I was doing my undergrad in bio, um, organic chemistry was like the class that made people quit bio. Like, oh, you want to be a doctor? You went to organic chem and you were like, I don't even ever want to do science ever again. So, um, so that was like when I was a freshman and you take like organic chem when you're a junior. So by the time I was a junior, there were two teachers that taught organic chemistry. One of them was the one that was there when I was a freshman that everyone like cried and failed and wanted to drop out of school because of. And the other one was actually a really amazing teacher. And I was like, I am not taking orgo unless it's with the good teacher. Like I absolutely refuse. I would go online and check every single day to see if somebody dropped the class because I didn't have first pick at the class at that time. Like the 
it goes by like seniority and it just so happened that I didn't so it filled up so I would go on every single day to see if somebody dropped the class and when they did drop the class I would I swiped it right up and I had roommates that were just like oh I don't care I'll just take it with the other one I'm like you're crazy you're legitimately crazy and it made a huge difference the teacher was absolutely amazing she would write up like um study guides for the class but then have like blank spaces where you would draw the figures and what's going on and what's happening it was really easy to like listen to her talk and write out the figures and then look back at the information and be like oh that's what this figure is that's what this figure is but the other teacher would just talk and you'd have to write and like you'd be trying to say like this is this thing and this is the like and it was just all over the place and people didn't understand it was horrible so as much as people like two point fingers like oh you don't understand it because this is not the teacher is a huge it makes a huge difference so make sure you check your rate my professors and that doesn't mean that their rate my professor profile has to say that they're easy but you want to just make sure that the rate my professor profile isn't like this is the worst teacher they were so mean they were so horrible they failed half the class you want to make sure that it's like this teacher's challenge, my personal favorite is this teacher's challenging, but as long as you put in the effort, you will do fine. So, because I'm the sort of person, I don't like taking a class that's an easy A, because I feel like I try way harder than a lot of people, and if we're all getting A's, like, that's not fair, you know? So, you know, you definitely want to find the right teacher. So, I hope that covered all the information for you guys. I'm going to do, like, a more in-depth video later possibly where I don't know I'm throwing out a lot of stuff but maybe I'll add to this series where I talk about like study guides study tips things like that but um yeah hope you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe below thanks bye